Have you ever come across a hash in a CTF, but you couldn't quite figure out what type of hash it was so you could crack it with a tool like Hashcat or John the Ripper? Well, here are three ways you could potentially identify that hash so you can figure out which mode you need to use to crack it. The first way we can do this is with a tool called Hash ID. So we can put in the command line Hash ID dash M to give us what the mode will be in a tool like Hashcat, and then either the hash as a string or a file containing the hash. And the output is going to give us every single hash type that this hash could potentially be, as well as the different Hashcat modes associated with those types. Another way we may be able to identify the hash is by using example hashes on hashcat.net. For example, we have this hash here that starts with the dollar sign two a, and here on the example hashes page on hashcat.net, if we search for dollar sign two a, we would see that this is most likely a bcrypt hash, where we would want to use mode thirty two hundred, and we can double check this with hash id and see that it also comes up with bcrypt. This method is typically going to be better with hash types that use a specific start to their string, like how all Blake hashes start with dollar sign Blake, and bcrypt hashes usually start with dollar sign 2a. And lastly, we could use a hash identifier website, such as hashes.com, where we can paste in our hash and hit submit, which will also tell us what type of hash it is. In this case, it correctly identifies a bcrypt or blowfish hash. Just be careful when you're submitting hashes online because you don't know exactly where they're gonna go or where they could be stored. So if you find hashes in a real production environment, make sure you're using an offline tool.